breaking news. Somebody deleted all of Digital Rev TV. We'll dig in to find out what happened, where you can see the videos now, and we hear from Kai himself. Rumor has it that Canon's working on a retro camera. Canon launched three new amazing lenses I'll discuss, and there are rumors, plausible rumors, of a Sony 126 megapixel sensor, but it has a catch that I'll tell you all about. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Look, we all need a real presence on the web. We have learned we cannot put all of our energy into building social media. You need a place that is optimized for Google, for search engines. When somebody searches your name or they search for local photographers, they're not gonna find you on Instagram because that is optimized for making them money. Squarespace is optimized to make you money. Set up a domain, get your own email address and optimize it for search engines so that people can actually find you. It all starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. You'll try it out completely free. You'll love it, I promise. And when you do, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Get started today. First, let's talk about Digital Rev TV. If you aren't familiar with this iconic name, for like a decade, they were by far the biggest YouTube channel. Kai and Digital Rev with Loke, they inspired people like me to start up my own YouTube channel. They were funny, they were informative, and now they're completely gone. Digital Rev TV deleted all of their videos, or they're unlisted at least, so we can't see any of them. And this drives me crazy. I hate when huge pieces of history are just taken away. So I did some digging into the matter and I found a post on Reddit talking about it that Kai himself had responded to. And here's what Kai had to say. I can definitely confirm it wasn't me suing them. I can't think of any other reason than ego. Keeping them online is a constant reminder of past glories that they couldn't achieve again by themselves. I'm sorry, I'm not doing the accent. He goes on to say, whenever a staff writer left, they removed all credit from the articles that those writers had written and published online, which was seriously not cool. All of a sudden, these writers had no proof of their work to show any prospective employers. Staff were treated as a number and that included myself. It gets weirder. Digital Rev TV suggested about a year ago that they were going to sell at least one video as an NFT, a non-fungible token, one of those cryptocurrency get-rich-quick scams that was happening and now seems to have completely died off. So maybe that's why they took everything down, except the time frames don't exactly correlate. And when I look at their NFT page, they just have some weird knickknacks for sale, not the actual videos. So we don't actually know what happened, but maybe Kai's theory is right. That's really all we have to go on. I would have left it up because, well, not just for historical reasons, but it doesn't cost anything and they would still earn some advertising revenue. Maybe the checks wouldn't be hundreds of thousands of dollars like they were before, but something is better than nothing, right? If you do want to see Digital Rev TV videos, you can head to this link. We dug up them on an internet archive where somebody had downloaded them and re-uploaded them. And thanks so much for the pack rats out there that are saving stuff because you need to do that because you never know when important stuff is going to disappear. Up next, let's talk about Sony's rumored 126 megapixel sensor coming to you from Sony Alpha Rumors. Now that's a huge number of megapixels, but there's a catch. This is a foveon sensor. And a foveon sensor, well, first you have to understand what a bare sensor is. You see, Kodak in I think the 70s developed the first digital camera sensors. And in order to capture full color information, well, they had to put little red, blue, and green filters over each individual pixel. This is pretty much exactly how the human eye works. We have those three separate color receptors, so they mimicked it after the human eye. If you have a 24 megapixel sensor, six megapixels are blue, six megapixels are red, and 12 megapixels are green. But you can imagine some pretty huge flaws with the bare sensor, right? Like depending on the color of the subject, if it's a mostly blue subject way at the edge of the blue spectrum, then you would only be getting a quarter of the number of megapixels. So your 24 megapixel camera would only be capturing six megapixels of detail. That's, that's a huge problem, right? Well, there is an answer to this. It's a way to make each individual pixel gather 
all the different color frequencies. The technology is called Foveon, and I only know Sigma as having developed and produced these sensors. And the way they work is each pixel has three separate layers, a blue, a green, and a red layer. And depending on which layer actually absorbs a given photon, the sensor can determine the frequency of it. And thus, each individual pixel has full color information, and this has the potential to improve the amount of detail we see, especially in objects that are mostly red or blue at the edges of the visible spectrum. But there's a weird way about how they count megapixels. As you can see, each photosite, each pixel actually has three separate layers. So they count each one of those separate layers as an individual pixel. So while they might call it a 126 megapixel sensor, it would actually be gathering 42 megapixels of full color information. Sony Alpha Rumors also reports that they're developing an 83 and 40 megapixel sensor. But again, you have to divide that number by three to get a more realistic comparison. So those end up being 27 or 13 megapixels. Anyway, I'm super excited for this. I would love for somebody to do something in the field of camera sensors, right? Because we haven't seen any development since like literally the 70s on this. So good for Sony. If anybody could do it, Sony could. Now let's talk about rumors for Canon's retro camera. I have here next to me a Canon A1, and it is such a beautiful camera. I also have a much more modern Canon R10 here, and these are probably about the same price, like they were both pretty entry-level cameras. And as you can see, the R10 is, what's the word, fugly, boring? And the Canon AE1 is just, Gorgeous. I love the angles. I love the multiple colors. Canon is not exactly breaking new ground by considering a retro camera. Sony has done it. Nikon has done it. Fuji basically pioneered that field. I hope Canon does this. I think they will do it. And let me just give a little bit of a guidance. Don't copy Nikon's retro cameras. Copy Fuji's retro cameras. We want the actual analog controls. If you do this, you need to get rid of the PASM dial. I want to separately dial in an aperture on the lens itself. I want the shutter speed and the ISO to be analog dials. I don't want to have to look at a digital screen. I want the full immersive retro experience, not just a little chrome plating like what Sony does. Now, Canon launched three new very important lenses. The first is the Canon RFS 10 to 18. This is an ultra wide angle lens for cameras like this Canon R10 here. Up till now, you haven't been able to get wider than like 27 millimeters equivalent with their APS-C cameras. This opens it up to an equivalent 16 to 29 millimeters. So finally, you'll be able to get wide angle or even just the same focal length as the standard lens on your smartphone. I'm really excited about this and I just pre-ordered it. The Canon RF 200 to 800 should be the best wildlife zoom out there. As the guy who just tested eight <laughs> wildlife zooms, picked a winner, and then Canon came and released a new one just like two weeks later. Well, Canon came in third in that previous test because their existing 500 millimeter zoom lens didn't reach quite far enough and that was really holding it back. But there is a catch with it. At the long end, it's F9, which is kind of slow. But I personally really endorse the Canon 800 millimeter F11 prime. And that's F11. It's uh, almost a full stop slower than this and you can still get great results with it. The fact of the matter is modern mirrorless cameras, autofocus is great at small apertures, something DSLRs could not do. And modern noise reduction is pretty amazing. So we'll see how this actually performs. It's not cheap, it's $1,900 at this link here. And if you do pre-order it, let me know and please do use Adorama. You can see it's a big white lens, but it is not an L lens. So it has some weatherproofing, but it's not as weatherproofed as their professional grade lenses. I wish they hadn't made it white though. Like wildlife people, we want to be as discreet as possible, right? Here's a lens professional wedding and portrait photographers are going to be really excited about, event photographers. The Canon 24 to 105, wait for it, f2.8 L I S. What that means is this is a professional version of uh, the 24 to 105 f4 lenses consumers have been using. And up till now, You've been forced to choose between a 24 to 70 f2 a professional lens or the consumer grade 24 to 105 f4 which gives a full stop of light and a lot of sharpness but if you went for the pro lens you didn't have as much reach and you didn't have optical stabilization so this lens gives you the best of both worlds albeit with a lot of weight it's huge 
Oh, and it's $3,000, so it's a lot of money, but still, I want this lens. And in fact, for events and stuff, this lens might be enough for me to switch to Canon. So I'll have to check it out. And I think my R3 here would be a really good choice for that. If you do decide to pre-order it, go to this link here. You know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go order one from Adorama now. In the comments down below, let me know what you think about this. And don't forget, as soon as this video stops, head to squarespace.com slash Tony and start setting up your website for that project, that business that you're working on. If you already have one, you should set up another. A lot of photographers, they do portraits and drones and real estate. Those deserve separate brands because you don't want your portrait customers getting distracted by some drone footage that you have, right? Create different brands, different colors, different fonts for different audiences. And I promise you can drastically improve the amount of business you pull in. It's all very easy at squarespace.com slash Tony. You can get a free trial. You'll see that you absolutely love it. After your free trial, when you're happy with it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10%. Thanks, Squarespace. Bye.